Memory leaks, one of the scariest bugs when programming in C++. Today we will look at the so-called write pattern. Resource acquisition is initialization is vital to avoid resource leaks. It is usable for all resources that need to be acquired and released. Mastering this design pattern will lead to cleaner code and less buggy software. Hi, my name is Zen and welcome to my channel. So today I have already prepared a little bit for you and we will have a look at three different classes. The first one is called leaky class, the second not leaky class and the third one the correct class. So the first one is leaking resources and uh, showing the design or the problem that we are trying to solve with using the right pattern. What the class will do is simply um, acquire a, a mutex because for whatever reason and then want to output a text to the console and this it will just output the test output to the console now let's look at how this is done inside the class so the class itself is default constructed nothing happening here and the output text method is using an internally defined mutex this can be to avoid race condition or because the output of the console should just be used by a single resource at a time. What it's doing at the beginning of the function, it is checking uh, whether the mutex can be locked and then it is checking some sanity checks, for instance, if the string is too long or something. And uh, if the string is too long, then it will exit prematurely out of the function otherwise it will use the string and output it to the console. The last step here is then that the mutex will be unlocked again. The problem here is the premature e exit of this function. So we use for instance some checks, those checks are routinely done also for other things, or if the function itself might throw an exception because you ran out of disk space or uh, whatever you can think of exceptions. The problem is that you exit here prematurely. But let's compile the program and see what it actually does in this way. Let's compile this program and have a look at the console, what happens if we run it. So we use the compiler again to compile this program and then we will execute it. So what happens here is exactly what we expect. So we have an output of the leaky class, the test and the test2 and of the not leaky and of the correct class. However, as soon as we will activate this output that will trigger the internal check, things will change. So let's activate this, recompile and have a look again. As you see here, the program doesn't do anything anymore. This is because we now have leaked the resource. We have leaked the mutex to be uh, precise. So let's look what actually happens. The mutex at the beginning of the function gets locked. Afterwards it is getting checked whether the string is too long for output and if it's too long then it will prematurely exit from this function. However as soon as we hit this return we never come to the line which is actually unlocking the mutex again. This will lead to a state in our software where our mutex is permanently locked and there is no way to unlock this mutex again. That's why if we call this function once with an output text that is bigger than the string size is allowing us here, than the 25, this will mean that there is a bug in our software. Now what to do to get rid of this bug? So let's have a look at the not leaky class because this is doing things slightly better. And actually this is a, what I will see a lot of in code uh, in production where people try to do the right, uh, right thing but didn't completely nail it down. So the right pattern says the resource acquisition is initialization says that whenever you need something that you need to acquire and release you should put it in the constructor and destructor of your class and let the constructor and destructor of your class do the work for you 
So in this case, it's done half right. So we do have this mutex again. And in this case, it's not in the output text function, but it's inside the constructor and inside the destructor of the class, which means that even if we hit this check for the string size, we will still unlock the mutex as soon as this class gets destroyed. So let's see how this goes. We will just activate this specific line here and recompile the program and check whether everything is working. So yes, it is working as expected. This text doesn't get output because it doesn't pass the check, but at least we don't crash and we don't have here a problem where the output stops altogether. However, there's still a bug or still, a, let's say, resource pro uh, problem in this uh, non-leaky class. The class has no leaks, but the problem is that the mutex will be locked for the entire lifetime of the complete class. This means that, for instance, if I want to do something here in between those lines, with the same mutex, this won't be possible and also like a parallel process cannot access it because it's still locked. So let's have a look at how this would be, uh, be solved completely correctly. In the correct class, we have introduced here now a second class. And the second class only purpose to exist is to handle the mutex. Here we have again the same pattern the Rai pattern, to be honest. And here we have that the mutex gets locked inside of the constructor and the mutex gets unlocked inside of the destructor. The class itself is doing nothing more than just handling the mutex. So it's really a nice abstraction of the things that you want to do. In the output text function here, now the mutex is not used directly but the mutex is passed to this mutex handler and the mutex handler is, uh, is created. So the benefit of this solution is that as soon as we hit something like a return in the middle of the function, a preliminary exit, every local variable that got created will still be destroyed. So even if we hit this return here, the destructor of the mutex handler will be called, which means that the mutex will be nicely unlocked. So let's have a look that this implementation does work as well. So we uncomment that line, we recompile the program, we let it run, and we see there is no resource leak. All of the output is visible that we expect to be visible. This text is not visible because it's too long, but it's not our blocking our program from further execution. This implementation here, the correct implementation as I have called it, is actually something that you can also find in the standard, standard library. So in the standard library, you can fill, still find something. In this case, it's called a lock guard, but it's basically doing the same thing, probably a little bit more fancy implementation than that. But it's doing the same thing. So whenever you want to manage your resources that needs to be in a symmetrical fashion, like a acquire and a release, an open and a close, a lock, an unlock. So all of this symmetric resource options, you should always use something like a handler or something like a lock guard. Um, that is using the Rai pattern. Because with this pattern, you can easily avoid any resource leakages and any um, problems and bugs that will arise from those resource leakages. One very, very prominent example of this is the uh, unique pointer and the shared pointer. These are great for handling resources and avoiding leaks of your program. That's all for today. Turn on your machine and get started. Tell me what you want to hear about next. And as always, enjoy coding.